So this is going to be um, Chronicles of Jeremiel, starting on page 272. Um, this paragraph here is, um, I'll read it to you. Then spake Moses, then spake the Lord to Moses, close thy eyes one after the other and gather up thy feet. Then addressing the soul of Moses from the midst of his body, he said to it, my daughter, after I have placed thee in Moses' body for 120 successive years, the time has now arrived for thee to go forth from it. Therefore depart and do not delay. The soul of Moses said, O Lord of the universe, I know that thou, thou art the Lord God of the spirits of the, all flesh, and all, all, that all souls, both of life and death, are delivered into thy hand. Though it was who, thou it was who createdst me, thou it was who formedest me, and didst place me in the body of Moses for 120 years. And no human body has ever been purer than the body of Moses, in which no evil germ was seen, no worm or insect wherein there never was any overestimation. On account of all this, I love him and do not wish to depart from him. O soul, added God, depart and do not delay. I shall then carry thee up into the highest heavens and place thee beneath the throne of my glory with the cherubim, seraphim, and gedudim, the troops of angels. Once more, en entreating the Lord, it said, Lord of the universe, from thy divine presence on high, there once descended two angels, Azah and Azazel, who in their desire for the daughters of earth corrupted their way upon the earth until thou didst suspend them between heaven and earth. But from the very day on which thou didst reveal thyself in the bush, the son of Amram did not approach his wife. As it is said, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses on account of his wife. I entreat thee, O Lord, allow me to remain in the body of Moses. At that moment, by a kiss of God, the soul of Moses was taken from him. And as if weeping, God exclaimed, who will now rise up to correct the evildoers? Who will now stand up for the workers of iniquity? The Spirit of God then wept and said, There has never yet arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses. The heavens wept and said, A pious man has perished from the earth. The earth wept, saying, There is no upright man left on the earth. When Joshua had sought for his master and could not find him, he also wept, saying, Save me, O Lord, for the pious one is no more, and the faithful have ceased from among men. The Israelites then wept, saying, He performed the righteousness of God, and the angels of every heaven exclaimed, His judgments are with Israel. The remembrance of the righteous is for, for a blessing, and his soul returns to everlasting life. Now what was the special merit of Moses that God himself should attend on his burial? It was for the following reason. When he went down to Egypt and the time for the redemption of Israel had arised, has arrived, all the Israelites busied themselves with silver and gold, while Moses, for three days and three nights, wearied himself by walking around the city silently searching for Joseph's coffin. Since they could not depart from Egypt without Joseph, for he had made them promise him before his death and swear that they would, would do it, as it is said, and Joseph made the children of Israel swear. When Moses was already exceedingly tired, a woman, Sarah, the daughter of Asher met him, seeing him very faint and weary. She said to him, My Lord Moses, why art thou faint? Because, said he, I have been wandering around the city for three days and three nights in search of Joseph's coffin, but have not been able to find it. Come with me, and I will show thee where it is, leading him to a brook in that place. She then related to him that the magicians and wizards of Pharaoh had made a coffin of lead for Joseph, weighing five hundred talents, and cast it into a brook. They thus spoke to Pharaoh, If it please the king, this nation will now not be able to go forth from this place as it cannot discover Joseph's coffin. Standing by the edge of the brook, Moses exclaimed, Joseph, Joseph, thou knowest how thou didst cause Israel to swear, saying, The Lord will surely visit you. Now bestow glory upon the God of Israel, and do not prevent their redemption. Beseech, I pray thee, thy creator, that thou mayest rise from the, these depths. Immediately after this, the coffin ascended from the depths, preceded by a bubbling of the waters, floating as lightly as a reed. Lifting it upon his shoulders, he carried it along, followed by all the Israelites. They carried the silver and the gold which they took from Egypt, whilst Moses carried the coffin. Then said the Lord to Moses, Thou sayest that thou hast in this done a small thing. By thy life, the mercy which thou hast shown is great, since thou didst not think of the silver and gold. I shall therefore show thee the same mercy when thou departest this life. 
I shall with my glory bestow kindness on thee. Thus, when the time had arrived for Moses to quit this world, and God said to him, Behold, the time approaches for thee to die, he exclaimed, O Lord of the universe, after having received the law and having suffered such weariness, dost thou tell me, The day of thy death draws near. I shall not die, but will live. Thou, cannot, thou canst not, for this is the way of man. Lord of the universe, entreated Moses, I beseech thee before my death to allow me to enter and search all the gates of the heavens and the depths of the earth, that they may see there is none besides thee, as it is said, and thou shalt know this day and lay it up in thy heart, that the Lord is God and no one else. God said, Thou hast written of me and no one else. I say of thee that there has not yet arisen in Israel anyone like Moses who knew the Lord face to face. What is the meaning of the words? Behold, thy day draws near its end. Our Simon said, The very day appeared before God and said, Lord of the universe, I shall not move nor end so that Moses may continue to live. The sages asked, What did Moses do as soon as he knew the day on which he was to die? Our Janai said that on the day that he... On that day, he wrote 13 scrolls, 12 for the tribes, and one he placed in the ark. In the event of their seeking to falsify a word, they might refer to the one that's in the ark. Then said Moses, While I have been occupying myself with the Torah, which is living, the day has set, and the decree is thus annulled. God then forthwith made the sign to the heavens, and the day remained at a standstill, saying, I will not set so that Moses shall live. Therefore Job uttered, did not I weep for him that was in trouble, whose day was fixed? That is, the day was hardened, fixed for him. What is the meaning of the words, Behold, thy day draws near? Just as one man says to his neighbor, Behold, someone has sued thee before the king. He called Joshua and addressed God thus, Lord of the universe, let Joshua my servant be the ruler, and I shall live. God replied, Serve thou him as he did serve thee. Moses then rose up and hastened to the house of Joshua, who was greatly afraid, and said, Moses, my teacher, has come to me. When he went out, Moses walked on Joshua's left side. When they entered the tent of the congregation, the pillar of cloud descended and separated them. As soon as it departed, Moses went up to Joshua and asked, What did the word say to thee? And Joshua replied, When the word was revealed to thee, I knew what was said to thee. Moses then wept, saying, Better one hundred deaths than one jealousy. Solomon explains it thus, that love was as strong as death and jealousy as Sheol, i.e. the love which Moses bare Joshua and the jealousy which he showed towards him. When Moses was about to die, God tried to appease him, saying, By thy life as thou hast guarded my children in this world, so will I in the future world make thee the leader of my children, as it is said, and he will remember the days of old. This is the blessing with which Moses blessed the children of Israel before his death. What is the meaning of the expression before his death? The sages say that Moses took hold of the angel of death and compelled him to go before him while he blessed each one of the twelve tribes. Our Mir says that the angel of death approached Moses and said to him, The Lord has sent me to thee, because thou must depart on this day. Moses said, I seek to praise God. As it is said, I shall not die, but live to tell the works of God. But why, said the angel, art thou so boastful? For there are others who praise him. The heavens and the earth glorify him every hour. As it is said, the heavens declare the glory of God. But I will silence them, continued Moses. As it is said, listen, O heavens, while I speak. For the second time the angel of death approached him, but as soon as Moses uttered the Shem, Hemaphorash, the ineffable name, he fled. As it is said, when I call upon the name of the Lord, bring ye greatness to our God. When the angel of death approached him a third time, Moses said, it is now necessary for me to justify the divine judgment upon me, for it is said, The rock whose work is perfect. Our Isaac said that the soul of Moses refused to depart, for him, depart from him, so that Moses communed with it, saying, Dost thou ever, dost thou ever, that the angel of death tried to overcome thee? God will not do this, it replied, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Has he caused thee to see them crying and made thee weep with them? No. For thou hast delivered my eye from tears. But did he try to make me fall among them, the people? Thou hast prevented my foot, said it, from slipping. And where wilt thou in future walk? The soul replied, I shall walk before the Lord in the, hand, in the lands of the living. As soon as Moses heard this, he exclaimed, Return, O my soul, to thy rest. Arabid said that as soon as they departed, the mortals glorified God, saying, Moses has commanded us a law, an everlasting inheritance to the congregation of Jacob. 
R. Joshua ben Levi said that when Moses ascended on high to receive the law, a cloud appeared before him in the crouching position so that he did not know whether to ride upon it or to take hold of it. However, it soon opened, and having entered it, the cloud carried him aloft. Moses then walked along the firmament, just as one walks along the earth, as it is said, and Moses went in the midst of the cloud. Kemuel, the angel appointed over 12,000 other angels of destruction, kept guard at the gates of heaven, met him. When he saw Moses, he rebuked him, saying, Thou comest from a place of defilement, and darest walkest in this place of purity? What dost thou, who wert born of a woman in this place of fire? I am Moses, the son of Amram, and have come here to receive the law for Israel. Moses walked along the firmament, just as a man walks along a pathway, until he came to Had Hadarnio. The sages say that Hadarnio that he stands 60,000 parasangs above his fellow angels, and that every word he utters is accompanied by 12,000 sparks of fire. On seeing Moses, he in his turn rebuked him, saying, What dost thou in a sublime and holy place? But as soon as Moses heard the voice of Hadarnio, he became frightened, confused, and trembled exceedingly in his presence, and the tears flowed from his eyes. He therefore entreated the cloud to cast him forth, but God's mercy was moved from Moses, and he thus addressed Hadarnio, from that very day that I created you, you have striven before me. When I wished to create man, all of you became his accusers before me, saying, What is man that thou dost remember him, and the son of man that thou shouldst visit, shouldst visit him? You gave me no rest until I consumed many of your companies. And now, seeing that my desire is to give my law to my children, you stand in the way and will not allow my law to descend to my chosen people Israel. Indeed, were it not for Israel, who are to receive my law, there would be no dwelling in the firmament, either for me or for you. As it is said, if I had not created the day and the night, I would never have decreed the statutes of heaven and earth. When Hadarniel heard this, he rose and prayed and made supplication before God, saying, O Lord of the universe, it is revealed and known before thee that I did not know that Moses came here with thy permission. Now that I know it shall act as a messenger... I shall act as a messenger to him. I shall go before him as a pupil before his teacher. Thus humbling himself, he went before Moses as a pupil before his instructor until he came to the fire of Saldalthon. And then Hadarniel said, Moses, do thou proceed, for I am not able to stand before the fire of Saldalthon. I fear lest he consume me with the breath of his mouth. When Moses perceived Saldalthon, he was confused and trembled, and the tears flowed from his eyes. He then des desired to be thrown from the cloud and besought the mercy of God. His prayer was answered, and for that moment the Holy One, blessed be he himself, descended and stood before Moses until he passed the fire of Saldalphon. Concerning this it is said, The Lord passed before him, and he exclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, the God of mercy and kindness. Of Saldalphon the sages say that he towers above his fellow angel, angels a distance that would take five hundred years to walk, and that he stands in the front curtain, weaving crowns for his maker. The ministering angels do not know where God dwells, for it is said, Blessed be the Lord from his abode. And it is not said in, but from his abode. He, Sadelphon, therefore conjures with the ineffable, ineffable name, and the crowns depart to rest by itself on the head of the Almighty. As soon as the crown leaves the hand of Sadelphon, all the heavenly hosts are moved, and the holy creatures, till now silent, roar like lions, and they exclaim with one voice, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. When the crown reaches the throne of God, all the wheels of his chariot and thrones commence rolling, and sockets of fire blaze forth, and all the heavens are seized with terror. When it passes on to the throne, all the heavenly hosts with their own crowns on break forth into glorification of God, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his abode. Come and see the glory and greatness of God. As soon as the crown reaches his head, that he strengthens himself to receive the prayers of his servants. Then all the Hayoth... Ophanim, Seraphim, the wheels of his chariot, and the throne of his glory, and the host above and below, exult, glorify, and break forth in words of praise, honor, and glory. And all this one mouth proclaim his sovereignty, saying, The Lord will reign forever and ever. As soon as Moses passed away from Sadalphon, he came to Rigion, a river of fire, where flames burn the angels of fire, just as fire which consumes man. Moses, however, was taken across by God. He then met Galsifer, an angel whom is attributed the saying that out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth evil and good. Why was his name called Galaser? Because he reveals the secrets of God. His wings are spread out to receive the fiery breath of the holy creatures, for were he not to do so, no creature would be able to endure it. Galaser is appointed for another kind of work. He prophesies that this year shall be a good wheat crop, the, bear, the barley shall ripen, and the wine shall be cheap. And yet another kind of work. Taking a thick covering of iron and spreading it 
on the river Rigion, he places certain people upon it opposite the angels and princes so that they may prosper and that their, their fear shall fall upon the creatures. God took Moses up and brought him across the river. After this, Moses met a troop of angels of terror that surround the throne of glory and that are mightier and stronger than all the ministering angels. As soon as they espied Moses, they tried to consume him with the breath of their mouth, saying, What dost thou in the place of glory? But God immediately spread the glory of his throne around about him and said, As it is said, he closeth in the face of his throne and spreadeth his cloud upon it. Moses thereby strengthened, returned the following answer. What avails the Torah to you? The exodus from Egypt does not apply to you, nor the worshipping of strange gods, nor the taking of oaths. At this they immediately rendered their thanksgiving to God, as it is said, O Lord, how mighty is the name, thy name in all the earth. Thou whose majesty extends over the heavens, from that moment every one became Moses' friend. Everyone handed over to him a secret cure, and even the angel of death revealed to him his secret, as it is said, and he gave the frankincense and atoned for the people. Then opening the seven firmaments, God showed him the heavenly temple and the four different hues in which the tabernacle was made. As it is said, And thou shalt erect the tabernacle according to the plan which thou sawest in the mount. O Lord of the universe, said Moses, I do not know its form. Then spake God to him, Turn to the right. He did so, and seeing angels clothed in a color like that of the sea, God said, This is blue. Now turn left, said God. He did so, and seeing angels clothed in white, God said, This is the fine linen. Then turning in front of him, seeing the angels clothed in red, God said, This is the scarlet. Now turn behind thee. Turning behind, he saw angels clothed neither in red nor green, and God said, This is purple. The Lord then opened the seven doors of the seven heavens and revealed himself to Israel face to face in his glory with his crown. And as soon as Israel heard the words, I am the Lord thy God from the God's own mouth, their souls departed forthwith. As it is said, the souls of the Israelites departed when he spoke. The law went forth to the Israel and found them all dead. Returning to God, it is said, The Lord of the universe, to whom hast thou given me, to the living or to the dead? To the living, said he, hast thou not applied to me the, to me the verse? It shall be thy life in the length of thy days, and yet here are all, they all dead. Then for thy sake I shall restore their souls, and causing that dew to ascend which is destined to revive the dead. He thus brought them to life, as it is said, Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain. Thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. He then restored their souls, as it is said, The law of God is perfect, refreshing the soul. There then descended at the command of God a hundred twenty myriads of ministering angels of whom a pair went to each of the Israelites, one to place his hand upon his heart to prevent his soul from departing, and the other to strengthen his neck that he might behold God. But why did God reveal himself to them face to face? Because he said to them, Know that I reveal myself to you in my glory and in, ma in my majesty, so that in the event of one of you leading others astray and saying to them, Forsake your God and let us go and serve other gods, you may then say to them, Is there anyone who after beholding his creator in his glory and in his majesty upon the throne of his glory would go and serve other gods. Then said the Lord to Moses, My angels are afraid of thee because of the fire of thy lightning is stronger than theirs. Let Michael, my archangel, go before thee, for my great name is engraved upon his heart, as it is said, for my name is within him. The glory of the heights is in his right hand, and the image of Jacob thy forefather on thy left. Moses was then inwardly pleased when he saw the Most High condescending, condescending to argue with him. All the inhabitants of the world were confused. The inhabitants of every country were astonished when they saw Moses and the son of Amram, who had captured the king's daughter, the law, descending in great exaltation, as it is written, Thou didst ascend on high, thou didst take captive and receive presents from man. It is further written, A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty, and bringeth down the strength and, the comp and strength of the confidence thereof. The mountains... And hills skipped like rams when they saw the canopy erected and the daughter of God as a bride decked with precious stones. The daughter of God is the Torah, the law, and the precious stones represent the twelve tribes who said, All the Lord has spoken, we shall do and hearken thereunto. As soon as they exclaimed, he, We shall do and we shall obey, there descended a hundred and twenty myriads of ministering angels who placed two crowns upon every one of the Israelites, one because they said, We shall do the other because they exclaimed, We shall obey. And the glory of the Lord was revealed from heaven, from the habitation of His holiness. He gave the Torah to the children of Jacob, His chosen one, and gave them righteous judgments, a true law, statutes and commandments for their good, by which to prolong the life, to obliterate the sins, and to sow the seeds of righteousness. 
So I don't know if you guys caught it. I'm going to end it there at page 282 um, right here. I think that's 53. Um, but you see here, the mountains and hills skipped like rams when they saw the canopy erected. Flat earth with a firmament above it. And I don't know if I'll be able to find it here, but at the beginning, when Moses was taken in the cloud to go to heaven, it said that he, he um, walked along the firmament. Right here. Walked along the firmament just as one walks along the earth. It's a dome. It's a solid structure. It's this. This is the magnetic mountain. This is the flat earth. And above that is the dome. And the whole entire world doesn't know this because they lied to us. But these things are being revealed because Jesus is coming back soon. And this sides of the north and the mount of the congregation, that's where the devil said that he would sit there. And the, and the Lord said, no, you won't. And he cast him down to earth. And he made the devil to be stuck here. And the fallen angels can't leave because they're bound here too. They're stuck in here under the firmament. They cannot rise above that station. And they're stuck here to torment mankind who are sinners and are following after them, who bow to their statues. They're not statues of Peter, Paul, and Mary, and all these other saints. They're not statues of them. They just made them in their image, but they're, they're not them. They're fallen angel statues. And those same statues, if you read the super gospel, were bowing before Jesus when they were in their original forms as the fallen angel statues that they were originally before Constantine merged Christianity with paganism. So I just wanted you guys to be able to read that. This book this book and most of the books that are on the table right now are at sacred word publishing so if you guys want to check them out there's like countless things in this book that are like make the entire entire bible make sense like i don't think anybody even realizes what half of those bible verses like would mean until they read that and understand what what is being said so i uh, just wanted to share that with you guys um i found this picture i did of jesus that's like one of the first ones i did but see, the cross beam's not there yet. Because I, I don't know if he actually dragged a full-length cross. I think he carried the cross beam. Um, and they already had the, the actual, that part set up already. But I have different pictures of all the different scenarios and whatnot. But just wanted to share that with you guys. And hope you have a great night. God bless.